origin of Joe's discovery dates back to 1957, when he was stationed in Puerto Rico on an army base. I just saw a lot of disparity between wealth and poverty. And I was in an orphanage home myself when I was a kid, and I feel compassion for people. I saw 200 people get wiped out on Indian Island in a hurricane. They had it on the news one day like it was 200 pigs. And that really upset me. And so I stood on a mountain one night talking to God and looking up into a beautiful night of stars, billions of stars. And I made a vow that if I'm the only entity in the universe. I'm going to make an effort to do good, do good for humanity, and I prefer death than not do it. Give me the wisdom, give me the knowledge that I can accomplish what I wish to accomplish before I die. I'll never see this disparity of wealth and poverty anywhere on earth or the injustice that I see here. I have lived that vow. But Joe was a young inventor, not a scientist. He patented some of the first plastic-covered barbells in America. Then one day he came across a book on electrical energy that gave him new insights into how the universe worked. In 1968, God had me go through a series of thoughts, and I saw it. It's a gyroscopic particle, and I knew that it was right, and I knew it could be beneficial to mankind. Gyroscopes, like this child's toy, stabilize as they spin on their axis. In examining the way magnets attract and repel, Joe came up with nothing less than a working model for the universe that turned scientific theory of the last 200 years on its ear. He believes all atomic particles are actually tiny gyroscopes, Always staying level, they move in endless spirals, attracting and colliding with each other. And it's that theory that drives his machine. I think it's probably the most significant discovery in the history of man. Still, the U.S. Patent Office calls Newman's invention an impossible perpetual motion machine, and for eight years now has refused to grant him a patent. If I'm wrong, the best way to have exposed me, issued the patent, Throw me out in the public, and if I was wrong, they'd prove I was wrong right quick. Nobody be embarrassed but Joe Newman. Today, Joe Newman was not embarrassed. He brought his slow-moving car to a stop after two hours and said it could have gone on and on. Newman compared it to the first flight of the Wright brothers. Bill Whitaker, CBS News, Biloxi, Mississippi. And for your can-do CBS Evening News, Dan Rather. Thank you for joining us. Good night. I was not convinced probably on the first three times that I saw the device and saw it tested that uh, that indeed it put out more energy than it than it took in. I am convinced now. Uh, I was a little bit prejudiced and like all people that come up with uh, devices like this you think they're wrong and so you go down to prove them wrong if you're that interested and I was not able to prove him wrong nor were the people that I was with able to prove him wrong. But for those of us who worry about skyrocketing utility bills and Arab oil embargoes, just imagine, what if Joe Newman is right? I think Einstein's going to have to take a second seat to Joe Newman. All right, now this is from the Granger catalog, but it clearly shows you as the motor gets bigger, constantly, it gets more weight, more weight. This one here is 360 pounds. This one here is 1,660 pounds. That's 2,200 pounds. Well, notice something. As you do this, the amps, just like that gets bigger, as the motor gets bigger, the current draw gets bigger, 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 bigger. Down here is 121. Here is 225 amps of current. And the heat laws on the motor is the current squared times the resistance. This motor weighs 2,200 pounds. It claims to be 96% efficient. 96% efficient. The heat loss in, the mo in a motor is a current squared. You square 225 times the heat resistance, uh, times the resistance in a motor, it tells you the heat loss in the motor, which is phenomenal. They're not highly efficient. Uh, we're going to show if this motor is efficient, because this motor weighs seven and a half thousand pounds. All right, I'm Joseph Newman, uh, and we're going to uh, have some young people here with us from. North Texas University. This is Aaron. Diane's going to be hip assisting him. Uh, she's going to be a teacher. And Aaron's going to get the idea of the power it takes to even move the shaft of this seven and a half thousand pound motor. And Aaron's going to pick it straight up with one hand, straight over the shaft. Put your hand straight over it. This, you're going to just do a curl. Go through. 
And you can see how hard that is, and that's good. All right, and what I want is your honest opinion. What do you think the chances are the current out of this battery is gonna run that motor? I'd probably say impossible by itself. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right, good. And that's what I want people to understand. It is impossible by conventional wisdom that this can happen. As long as you keep turning that, it'll run that machine. But it's so obvious, you've got Aaron standing up, trying to turn that from the shaft, and he can't turn it. You're supposed to have losses in this generator, in that machine, and in that pump. Look at it still running with one finger. It's like Dr. Swimmer tell you, it's not but one expert, and that's me. That does it. So I'll see y'all in Phoenix, Arizona for Perpetual Motion.